So uh, today's topic uh, is about the Yakto Project's uh, Eclipse plugin, and the goal of it is after the talks, I hope you agree this is an effective this ID environment for both the embedded application developer and system developers, and hope you start using it and benefit from it. Um, so the agenda of the talks is first I'm going to yeah, work through the embedded Linux development flow and then we just talk about what's the Yakto projects of. So this is a uh, this diagram uh, basically show a typical does embedded Linux development flow, and from this diagram we can see there are two main does a uh, roles of developers: the system developer and application developer. And the system developer does uh, typically the project starts with the system developer pick a base platform build profile, and by using that uh, build profile, does uh, it generates a root file system and the kernel, and also does uh, the system. So we know we all know that uh, uh, the embedded Linux does uh, the devices does uh, needs lots of the customized applications. It's not just uh, you build something that's uh, yeah, common and then that can be the uh, best uh, utilized or uh, demonstrates the uh, unique features of the devices. So typically the application developers need to do some the special the uh, applications for that to go with that device. So then uh, to support that activity, the system developer needs to develop, uh, deliver a toolchain and sysroot for the application developer. And once the, that's the two key components the application developer needs, and once those are available, the application developer can start their application projects. And uh, as we all know, the embedded uh, Linux development typically is a cross-developed environment, so they set up their cross-development environment and work on their projects. And this typically involves the coding and use the uh, cross two chains and the remote debugging and fine tune your application. So after all those uh, activities are done, that leads to this, uh, uh, the application files being generated. And so now we switch back. So now we have the starting point, uh, the base, this uh, uh, platform, and also we have the customized applications for this, uh, uh, the device. Now there's uh, the task back to the system developer, and the system developer needs to take all these ingredients and uh, yeah, do the final stage of the platform customization. Basically, a, they need to turn the application, the specialized applications, into packages and use the pa add the package application packages into this, uh, the base foundation that the project start with and then the, uh, deliver the final runtime image. So here we just uh, summarize the typical task uh, for both the system developer and the application developer. So for system developer, yeah, we know that uh, first that they need to pick a build profile and then there's a the, do the customization for this, their embedded device through the uh, package selections. And also, there's, uh, each embedded device are unique, so there's all kinds of there's, uh, either resource of some there's, uh, runtime there's requirements, so the system developer's activity also involves them, needs to uh, do the fine tune things like image footprint. And the other that's a very key part of the system developer's role is uh, create a reproducible build. So this means it cannot be just one-time shots. So typically, that's a, you, once you build uh, this customized build profile, it needs can be this a uh, yeah rebuild this uh, generates the same builds this uh, again and again but on top of that you still needs to have the flexibility allow us to be custom uh, for the customization here the customization is not talking about adding new features uh, which is augment the uh, the profile of change the profile here the customization is use you reuse, repeat the same build, but for different targets, and also this, uh, to support different package format. 
And again, that's, uh, we show there's uh, another that's a key that's delivery of the system developer is support the application de uh, developers through this uh, provide the two chains, build the two chains. So on the application developer side, they use mainly use the cross two chain and also take advantage of the sysroot setup. So sysroot is basically the concept is the, on the host uh, isolated area that contains the the targets, uh, development headers and libraries, and also with the sysroot setup works with the two chains. The application developer can uh, just combine this, uh, group them together, allows them to develop applications for different architectures uh, uh, against different uh, uh, sysroot support, different uh, build uh, profiles. And uh, the application developer, that's, uh, as we said, that's for embedded Linux is always a cross development and you very typically they have to do this uh, debug uh, remotely. So they need to do this uh, remote debug that's on the targets, either that's uh, against the real hardware or the emulator. And Again, also that's for the once the application functionality is validated, the um, typically application developers still does needs to fine tune their uh, the performance of their applications. So this involves using the profiling and tracing tools. So all of this we can see that is uh, for both application developer and system developer, their task is really quite dynamic and uh, yeah, uh, and can be very complicated. So uh, frameworks that can streamline this development process is highly desirable. So that's an overview of the embedded uh, Linux development. Now let's take a look of what the Yachtel projects offers for the embedded Linux development. So I don't know that uh, anybody, that's uh, some of you that's maybe already a Yachtel projects user and some of you may be new to it. So fundamentally Yachtel projects, we just want to deliver the message, is not another embedded Linux distribution. It creates a customized one for you. So the goal of us is help people that's, uh, to find a, a standard way by using different various kind of tools that under the Yachtel projects, the big umbrella, that quickly roll out a customized as a, yeah, that's an embedded system, yeah, per your requirements, per your needs. So that's the big bubble, uh, yellow on top of that. So that's kind of like big umbrella. So underneath we have all kinds of tools. Is this small? That's a bubbles. And here I just mark those. That's a, a rel three only three that's relevant to these talks. And there's many more. So you can go to Yachtel Projects uh, websites to look at other sub projects. So. The first thing is the, the build system and the metadata. So the uh, the POC, this part, the build system and the metadata is mainly going to be used by the system developer, obviously. And the POCKY build system is using Bitbake, which is a widely that's adopted build system by the Embed Linux that's a, yeah, developer communities. What is this means that yeah, the Bitbake using is based on the standard formats of the recipe files and with this uh, standard the uh, recipe file formats and also uh, the Bitbake, the running system, uh, the build running system, and the broader uh, user base out there. So this, uh, it's very easy to share this, uh, the works, you works with the rest of the community. And the metadata is consists of the recipe files and configuration files. So this is where there's a yeah, the system developer that's uh, going to this, uh, yeah, do their development work with this, uh, through this uh, kind of like customization or extension, all those kind of things. And also there's uh, the whole infrastructure, how things set up is we have this OE core, which is this, uh, Contribute, mainly contribute by the uh, uh, Yachtel projects and Open Embedded, which are the two the uh, main the uh, communities the uh, yeah based on this uh, this feedback. And with this OE core, you can just um, grow the uh, your special features through the uh, yeah the extensions through layers. 
and for this uh, 1.1, this uh, uh, we just announced this uh, Yakto projects 1.1 release. For the 1.1 release, we. Uh, have the initial release of the hub, which is a graphical user interface for BitBake. So the goal of a uh, hub is really you don't need to be an expert of BitBake. So anybody that uh, want to use uh, Yakto projects and take advantage of it, so it, you shouldn't be this uh, at expert level to be uh, yeah really this, uh, able to use it. So then to be able to customize your build and images. And that's uh, the build system for the uh, application development uh, toolkit, which uh, is the ADT. So it contains the cross two chain for target device. So this two chain, that's, uh, as I said, that's, uh, is yeah supports this root setup, and it's optimized for auto two based projects. And also, it has, contains the uh, QEMU emulator. This QEMU emulator uh, can boot up through user mode NFS, and uh, also this, uh, it shares the same. This, uh, uh, its root uh, file system is extracted as sysroot, so this allows application developer to uh, quickly uh, deploy their application. Next time you boot up your QEMU through UNFS, the applications yeah will be there. And also, it contains, as we said, there's uh, another part of the application developer is to do the uh, the app analysis and profiling tracing. So it contains the tool suite to support that activity. And the Yakto Projects uh, Eclipse plugin is uh, from the uh, uh, Embed Linux. There's a uh, development. Overview. So we know that uh, we want a streamlined f uh, framework. So this is uh, IDE environment to streamline the development flow. So through wizard and templates, and it is based on the open source solutions from this. Uh, yeah, it's an Eclipse plugin. So it's based on lots of this uh, Eclipse communities. There's uh, great projects, uh, offerings like CDT, that's a uh, C++ development tools, and RC Remote System Explorer, TCF uh, target communication framework, and Linux tools projects. And also is. Uh, made a change and uh, extension to this BitBay Commander project. So this uh, is uh, open source a uh, small project which this, uh, supports the metadata interaction in through the uh, Eclipse IDE. So the goal of this, uh, this IDE uh, through this IDE, we just want users that uh, within this one environment can fully benefit from the Yakto project offerings. And if you are a system developer, that's a, you mainly needs to interact with BitBake, so you can interact with BitBake through Hub. And then, that's a, if you, yeah, again, for system developer, that's a, needs to develop this against the metadata, you can develop using the based on the BitBake commander projects. And also, that's a, with a ADT plugin, is that you can configure and use this, uh, yeah, the cross two chains and the sysroot, those setups. And then you can in, uh, bring up QEMU for the target uh, the device, that's a target architecture and then the, do the remote testing and all those kind of like interaction activities. Also, there's a, the is provide you a, a menu which allows you to access the, the tool suite that Yakto projects brought to you. So allows you to do the remote tracing and profiling this, uh, from the IDE, that's the environment. So I think that's basically the over the high level. That's uh, yeah, capture this uh, the embed Linux development flow and the Yakto project offerings. And now I'm just kind of like change my uh, gear to do a deep dive into the Yakto projects plugin. So now there's uh, any questions so far? Yeah. Is the hub part of the, the CDP project? No, it's separate. So we basically, that's uh, for Yakto 1.0, we mainly support application developer. The hub is part of the support for the system developer. So, so does hub stand for? 
Uh, yeah, okay, so it's not, uh, so Hub is, we, and it's kind of like developed by a co-worker and uh, he's from British, that's kind of like the cooktop, the yeah, British way called the cooktop. So we basically has the kitchen theme in the recipe, the bit bake and youth, so it's kind of like a user interface, so that's the cooktop that yeah, allows you to cook things. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to this, uh, uh, talk about this, uh, yeah, as this gentleman asked, because for the Yakto projects, there's an Eclipse plugin, the 1.1, we cover both the system developer's needs and also the application developer's needs. So I'm going to speed, first talk about the flow for a uh, system developer. And then there's a, I do a demo of this, uh, yeah, all the uh, steps, this, uh, you, how you interact with this IDE. And then I'm going to talk, cover this, uh, the application developer. So each topic, I'm going to do a little bit comparison. That's, uh, with, starting with without the IDE, was, uh, yeah, there's a system develop, a developer li uh, life's going to look like. And then that's with the IDE, and hopefully you can see your life is going to be much easier that's, uh, with the IDE. And so without the IDE, for obviously that's, uh, you have to do many things, uh, everything that's uh, from the command line. So here I just list this, uh, the typical this, uh, yeah, steps of this, uh, from a system developer perspective. So first you need to clone uh, Yakto projects, the metadata. So yeah, at least that requires you to uh, know how to use Git from command line and all those kind of things. And then you need to uh, edit the recipe files. As we said, the system developer mainly is just editing the, re uh, interacts with the metadata, do the metadata development through this uh, recipe files, this editing, all those kind of things. So then you have to edit the recipe files use your preferred editor, Emacs, Vim, uh, whatsoever. And then the next is you have to uh, source this OE init build uh, script to set up your build directory. And with uh, the introduce of hub in one one, so the step four now is kind of like two options. If you really a die hard that's a command line uh, user, then you can just add it uh, you uh, conf local conf files that's uh, to configure that's uh, do extra configuration of your Yakto build and then run this a uh, bit bake from the command line. <coughs> or if you want to this uh, things that uh, you are not that good, and you want to try out Hub, so you can use Hub to, f yeah, that's a uh, further help you on um, doing this uh, customization and run the Yakto build from Hub. So now that's a uh, let's turn in to take a look of this, uh, yeah, what if the system developer wants to use this, uh, yeah, the Eclipse plugin? So first thing task you need, oops task you need to do is create this Yakto BitBake Commander projects, and this project is going to bring you metadata that's, uh, into this, uh, your IDE and allows you to yeah, navigate down through this, uh, the typical tree view, so that's, in my mind, is better view this, uh, of this, uh, different directories, the contents, and how to this, uh, get back and forth with files that's, uh, compared to the command line. And also I want to point out, as is, uh, the, this is Eclipse IDE, so there's other, there's, uh, yeah, yeah, open source, the plugins that's out there, that's uh, you uh, can inter, um, collaborate with this, uh, uh, the Yakto projects, the plugins. So, for example, you can use the IGIT, in, install IGIT and use it as use uh, SCM. So the next step is after the metadata is brought in, so you can navigate in this, uh, uh, the project's tree view and you use the Yakto BitBake recipe editor to this, uh, yeah, this, uh, edit your this recipe files. And uh, with this editor, it ha has all this, uh, yeah, the recipe files, the keywords highlighted, so it's definitely much easier, this, uh, more this kind of like, yeah, helpful way for you to edit your recipe files. And also there's a new recipe wizard allows the user to quickly create new recipe files. 
So after you're done this, uh, yeah, editing this uh, your recipe files, you can uh, set up the, uh, separate the build area for the your customization. Uh, you customize the metadata. So this allows you to, yeah, set up different build area that's uh, to accommodate different customization. And then you launch Hub, and that through that uh, the Hub interface to further this, uh, yeah, customize your build, and then there's a uh, run the uh, build from Hub. So here I'm going to do a demo. So this is the uh, Eclipse IDE, and then so the first thing you need to do is to create the bit big. Uh, big, big commander projects. So this is a template for you. So it's the, you just fill the wizard. And so here, this, uh, the project's name is the directory that contains your metadata. So that's um, the 1.1 release. And the project's location is the path that contains the metadata directory. So. It's, so here you notice that so we have this uh, clone from Yakto Git repository. As I said, these are the two folds. If you already have a local that's a, a metadata directory, you basically just specify based on your that's a, a local machine setups, and this way basically import your existing metadata into the Eclipse IDE. Or if you don't, you can choose this option and that's going to this uh, triggers the uh, git clone and create a metadata that's a uh, create your projects yeah that's based on this uh, git clone that's uh, the uh, uh, cloned metadata and that's definitely that's uh, you don't need to manually uh, do this uh, git clone of this uh, the metadata yourself from the command line so here I already have this uh, Edison metadata uh, on my so here I just say finish. So this is the metadata, and here you can see this. Uh, you can just uh, view this uh, all this uh, your recipe files. This is very typical. This uh, the tree view, so it's definitely easier. And I just choose. Uh, find one of the projects. So this is the big big commander editor. So you see all the keywords are highlighted for you. So it's definitely a much better this editor environment that's uh, for you to working on your recipe files. And uh, here, the other way, if if you want to create a new recipe file, you can do this. And here's another template for you. So this is going to bring up this uh, template files. So basically, you just specify your recipe files name, and here's uh, certain required the keywords you must fill them, and then your uh, recipe file will be created for you. And that's a good starting point for you to uh, just make changes and modifications. And after you've done this, all this, uh, your recipe files, this, uh, yeah, editing, uh, yeah, and you can just for this uh, Bitbay commander type projects, we have this uh, launch hub option. So that allows you to this, uh, yeah, bring up hub and uh, do the final task and to run the build. So here, that's a, you need to specify the uh, Bitbay build directory, and that's the directory that uh, you can specify different. That's a build directory, and that allows you to. That allows you to, yeah, for this a different cust the customization to set up different build areas, and so that's a, that's the flexibility there. It's going to should bring me. <clears throat> so
So this is a hop. Okay, so we have the list of the base images. Remember, from uh, I talk about the de development. That's uh, the overview. That's the flow charts. And here is the some that's a starting point you can use as uh, the base, the build profile. So I just select the core image minimal, and then there's a. The bottom part going to list. That's a, yeah. Uh, estimate the image contents, and here, that's you can just add. That's a yeah. Do the customization through this adding the packages. For one one, that's a, we only support add packages to the images, and yeah, we are going to this add supports remove packages. That's a, in in the next release. So here's the uh, remember I talk about repeatable build. That's a, against different architecture. So here is this. A, yeah, you can pick the architecture you want to build against. And also, we talk about this uh, uh, layer is the way to extend this uh, from the o OE core and to extend this uh, you uh, device, this all your projects, this uh, needs. So, this is this a way to interact with the layers. And there's also uh, <coughs> The pre preference, this is the place, so basically this reflects, remember as uh, I talk about this, uh, if you are uh, familiar with this uh, uh, Bitbake and know how to use it, there's a conf, local conf files you can configure to this, uh, yeah, to the guide you build and here is a way that's a, it's much easier way if you're not that familiar with how to configure your build here's more intuitive this you can see this here's other things you can customize and also if you choose to build the external two chains and then with within the same build is not only generates the root fs is also build the uh, build out the cross two chains for you so after you've done all the customization you just click the bake and this going to switch to the build view. Hmm. Okay. So this just showing you, give you this uh, a view of what's going on with you build. So what's at the task, and then this, uh, it's trying to build the image. So it's going to take some time. I just leave it running, and let's switch back to our presentation. So I talked about the system developer, and now let's switch to this. Uh, take a look of the Yakto Projects Eclipse plugin for application developer. So again, I'm going to start. Let's take a look without the plugin. So you have to do the yeah the following steps. That's from the command line. So obviously, this is kind of like much longer. This uh, steps a uh, list of steps. So. First, you have to set up your uh, cross tooting and sysroot for the cross development. And then you create either a make file or auto tool based projects. But no matter what, which one you choose, you have to configure them to this, uh, yeah, to use you this, uh, the cross toolings or the cross development setup. And then, so there's a, between two and three, there's definitely, uh, yeah, you need to write your code. And then there's, you compile your projects. This uh, after the step two, then step three, going to use you this across two chains allows you to compile your projects, and optionally, there's a so if you want to, there's a yeah decides to use a emulator that's a to this uh, as a target is to try out your applications, and then you have to bring up the Q -emu emulator from the command line. And then you have to uh, deploy your applications into the the target, and this that's a 
yeah, without any tools. So basically, you have to do this. Uh, yeah, all this either this uh, based on what your pref preference is. This uh, do these steps, and then there's a. Uh, for this uh, cross debugging against the de desired uh, target, uh, QEMU a real hardware. So you have to start the uh, GDB server on the target, and then you have to run this uh, cross GDB on the host sets to connect to the remote target. I'm sure that you all know, and you have your own way. Probably Simon automated the process. And then this, uh, for this, uh, performing the target analysis task for the, uh, like things like tracing and profiling, yeah, there's all kinds of tools. And for each individual tools, they you have to follow their rule or follow their ways to set up this uh, your this uh, environment allow you to do this uh, uh, remote launch or interaction from the host. So we can obviously. This is a very complex task, and also if you do everything that's on your own, the big drawbacks is, yeah, is can dramatically slow down your development cycle. So with the Eclipse plugin, then let's see that's a, what's kind of like going to happen. The first two steps, basically, you have to set up, yeah, that's uh, unavoidable. You have to set up your cross development environment, and you have to install this, uh, yeah, the, the Yacto Projects plugin into your IDE. And after you've done that, you just configure the Yacto Projects, the ADT plugin for IDE. So this means this setting is going to apply across the projects, that's, uh, yeah, your ADT projects within your IDT, uh, your IDE, the projects by default going to inherit these uh, configurations. And then you just pick one of the ADT auto tool based projects templates. So by default, the projects going, the cross development settings going to, yeah, you just inherit from the uh, IDE wise the ADT settings, but we allows you to customize your specific projects needs that's, uh, for the cross development. And then you work on your projects and then you configure and compile using the uh, cross development settings. And we automatically create a, a QEMU launcher for you. So then you just yeah, one click, and it's going to launch the QEMU instance for the uh, target. And also, there's a auto created a remote debug configuration template uh, templates for the projects. And uh, here, this uh, in these templates, you just set up things correctly, and then. Uh, Again, another one, yeah, button click is going to launch the remote debug session. And also, this uh, was, yeah. Here's this, uh, the two Swiss Yacto projects provides. And uh, from within IDE, we have this Yacto tools menu. And just, yeah, from there, you just interacts with this tools uh, on this uh, remote targets and from this uh, one place. So here I'm going to demo the usage for the application developer. Yeah, I just want to show you that uh, we kick off the the build in Hub and then this, the build is finished and here it says how many tasks run and uh, was, whether it's uh, failed or not. If there's a failure, it's going to highlight in red and you provide you some further this, uh, yeah, logging information about the failures. And so here you can just browse the folders this, uh, yeah, to see where's the build out images. And then this, uh, if there's error, you can click on this uh, view messages to see this, uh, the build log and also there's an uh, edit image that switch back to this uh, uh, image customization view and this allows you to do another uh, customization or further customization and kick off another build. So we just exit from hub. Now let's switch to
So this is the template a wizard for configure the uh, Yacto project's ADT plugin for the, uh, the IDE. So here you can see uh, the top is for you to set up your cross development environment. And there you choose either the uh, standalone, the uh, pre-built toolchain or build system derived toolchains. The difference between these two is standalone pre-built toolchain is you obtained a toolchain the build out by the Yacto projects and install under the opt Pocky directory. And the build system derived toolchain is that if you have uh, existing this uh, build directory and uh, we allow you to set up a toolchain in that environment through this, uh, uh, running the bitbig meta ID support command. And so we said that uh, you have you need the uh, the toolchain and also you need to specify the uh, the sys root. So this is root is extracted from the uh, the QMU, the uh, root FS. So it's one sys root can. Uh, this directory support both the user mode and FS boot boot out my QMU and also the uh, it's going to be used as my sys root setup. So then you need to select specify your targets the uh, device architecture. And here the uh, the bottom part is what kind of targets you want. Uh, I just select QMU for my demo. Here we just say that uh, we want create a new project, and you can see here's the option of this uh, the templates the Yacto projects that uh, the ADT provides. So I just choose a standard NCC projects as my start point. So here's my projects. It's nothing fancy, but it's just a starting point, and then so you can just build on top of it. So after I have my projects, I just want to say that's a. Uh, remember that's a. We talk about what if you want these projects to develop using a different tool chain, a different sys root, a different target. So here allows you to do that uh, project-wise customization here. So otherwise, all the default settings is inherited from you. There's an ADT, there's a set configurations for, from the IDE. After I'm done this, I'm just saying this, uh, reconfigure my projects. So because it's auto two based, let's wait. So I is here want to show you this uh you cross development uh, configuration settings are picked up and then there's uh yeah it's ready to go. So we just say projects, build projects. So the projects is built. The next we talks about uh we want to launch this uh, a QMU, this uh, emulator. So that's the launcher scripts, and just one click is bring up the QMU for you. So my QEMU is coming up, and now I can do my project's uh, remote debug. So this is 
the remote debug configuration that uh, the wizard or templates I talk about. So here, there's a, you see the connection. You just create a new connection and point to your QEMU instance. And here, you just want to specify Uh, where's on the remote target you want to deploy your application. So here you can see there's a, if you choose skip, skip down, by default it's going to do there's a remote deployment of your uh, application. Otherwise, if you choose this, it won't there's a, yeah, do the deployment and you just click on the debug. So this covers all the small uh, start remote uh, GDB server on the target and then there's a, uh, use this a, a cross a GDB, there's a debugger on your host side, and so here's everything. So this is just standard, the CDT, there's a, a debug viewer, and so here it stops at main, and then you can just kind of like conduct the typical debug activities, all those kind of things. And so uh, I just finished my debug session, and let's switch back. And uh, this is the Yocto tools. There's a manual. So this is the tool suite that we provide. So basically, there's a different for different tools. As I mentioned, if from the command line, uh, you have to follow the tools. There's a specific setups to allows you to interact with the tools from your host size to, uh, against the remote size, right? And here is also there's a different ways, but it's very easy for you to interact. So some tools, we launch a remote terminal. So basically, there's a from here, there's a, the re, through the remote terminal, you just interact with the tools. So this is. So. Something like that. And the other thing is this a, it's more like a client server model. So we either, uh, so for the LTTNG, we collect data on the remote side and transfer over and bring up the LT, local LTTNG viewer, allows you to view the data. And all that's uh, like for the O profile uh, case, that's a uh, start the O profile server on the remote end, and then there's a local viewer, the local client, and then there's interacts from the, uh, the client side. So I just, yeah, cannot just go through this. Uh, probably I can show you this. Uh, I have on the remote side uh, a USD instrument application. So this is uh, for this LTTNG UST case. So that's basically that covers this all the needs this uh, for the from the application developers this uh, required, and obviously you can see that's uh, it's definitely much simpler that's uh, yeah compared to the command line. So I'm going to close with what's next. So for the next release. Uh, our overall theme is keeps improving the uh, Yakto projects, the uh, user experience, and then uh, we are going to add new tools which covers the BSP and the kernel configuration, and we also that's uh, going to focus on improving the existing tools. So for the Bitbit Commander, I showed you that uh, we have the recipe that's a wizard, so we are going to extend that wizard and also add more features, uh, make the it make it easier easier for the user to create recipes and for the hub and uh, we are going working on a near and longer term the plans to make a better infrastructure yeah that allows the support a back end big big server and front end user interface model and from the mailing list we send out a proposal was the near and longer term plans on that and so yeah where this kind of, you are more than welcome to provide your feedbacks or give us inputs on your thoughts to ensure us deliver something that uh, you'll be using or benefit from. And also, that's, uh, we are going to deliver the key missing f uh, functionalities from the 1.1 uh, release. So 
just uh, now during the hub, as I showed you, currently we only can add packages to images, so we are going to allow you to do deselect packages, and also the uh, existing the package information is just based on some estimation, and we want to provide more pre precise uh, package information. And for the tracing and profiling tools, we just yeah needs to make it the tools easier to set up and also improve the tools functionality in the long term. So here are there's a couple resources that's uh, about the Yaxo projects and also there's uh, things relates to this talk. The ADT menu is give you the step by step guidance. And also we create two there's uh, videos. It's more like a tutorial. There's a recap goes through this uh, each steps I just demoed here for this Eclipse plugin and also Hub. And there's uh, earlier this year, there's a ELC, there's, a, there's a, a session about ADT. So any questions? Okay, thank you.